I didn't care if I had to poke a hole in a in a you know an ice chest and stick a lens out one side of it like that's how much I wanted to use these cameras we ended up doing is uh, basically the movie was a handheld show so we would get a bag of ice we put a bag of ice in we put it on so we keep it on an apple box in between takes we'd shut the camera down we put it on ice we'd have another ice pack on the top of the camera and basically we would wait to shoot and turn the camera on and shoot the shot and hopefully it would work and 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 um, and that would be it turned out that that the temperature sensor was in the wrong place <laughs> so even though it was saying it was too hot uh, it actually was wasn't even close to getting hot so uh, what turned out to be a huge problem for us in the, in the first uh, three or four days was actually a completely false problem. The first first shot um, um, Stephen uh, recorded, you know, I, I got the, the compact flash in my hand and I rushed to my laptop to make sure that, you know, everything was okay. We, could, we had an image and, you know, there were no problems with it and, and there weren't any problems with it. So it was a, it was a, it was a big relief to, uh, you know, to see the images come up on the laptop screen and everyone was looking and it was like, it was, it was perfect. You know, ultimately a lot of our worry you know, seemed unfounded, and um, but but there were definitely moments in the beginning where we were very unsure of what was going on. I think probably any other director would have said, "Let's get these cameras out of here. Let's like once once there's one problem, let's like let's get let's get the Panavision in. Let's get an area in. Let's let's bring another camera in. You know, I don't want to deal with this." Instead, Stevens, you know, calmly said. What we do? What can we do about this? And we could think about having a solution, um, and we came to solutions. And I don't think I think without Stephen's patience, uh, the the it probably would not have worked. And and I think it shows a lot of cojones for Stephen to kind of say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this really important film, but I'm also gonna use a new technology for it. I think my role in the, in, the, in the story of the red camera has been to constantly push the, what the camera can do to an extent that, that Jim and all of his guys are continually sort of saying, oh yeah, that's something we gotta deal with. I mean, we were really, if you were looking to see what these cameras could do and what they could handle, you couldn't ask for a better test case scenario because we were really beating the shit out of these cameras. And the countryside was extremely dusty. There were, you know, kind of uh, spiders everywhere, you know, spiders getting into the camera and dust and everything. And we were cleaning them pretty much every night. In these prototype cameras, there was no sealant between the glass and the sensor. So basically a lot of dust, we were in very dusty environments and a lot of dust was getting in between the sensor and the glass. And, and we didn't know why because it was supposed to have a seal. And, uh, and, and so we, we found out eventually that, that, that because these were the prototypes that they, they hadn't finished a couple of things. And, and that, that one thing was the seal around the sensor. So I asked Dean and what should we do? You know, how should we, how should we how should we uh, handle this? And Dean took a screwdriver on the butt of the screwdriver and banged it on the top of the camera. So basically, that was our way of clean of, of doing it. it. It worked. You know, we'd go in the morning, we look, and we'd see that there would be dirt on the sensor, and we bang a screwdriver on the top, and it'd kind of be like an etch a sketch. And we kind of wait to see where the dust would settle, and hopefully it would settle in a point where we could shoot, and that it, that it actually wouldn't be photographed. And, Actually, there's a few shots in Che where you can see spots, dust on the sensor, and that was what was probably from that. It started out originally as a 2K camera, and we were trying to make a camera that was a full-frame sensor, four-motion picture, kind of super 35 size size sensor. And uh, as it evolved through the design phases, you know, we, we discovered that we could increase our expectations of what we could get, so we pushed it up t to a 4K camera. At that time, the camera could only shoot 24 frames a second. Uh, since then, we've increased that to, to 30 at 4K, and then also added uh, 
the ability to do 120 frames a second at 2K. Uh, and then uh, we've improved the quality of the image at least a couple of times. So j just by the stuff that we've learned over time, we've just, we've just kept imp improving the image quality. So the, the goal at some point became was, was not just to make the best camera that we could, but to also make one that, that people could use uh, practically. You know, and that, that meant introducing you know, 4K compression. And then once we went down the compression route, you know, it was how can we get the best compression possible? How can we get uh, the best compression with the most flexibility? And, and then it ultimately it led to um, how can we get compressed raw? Raw recording process basically means that we take, you know, the image from the sensor, um, do as little as possible to it before recording it to disk. When Stephen was shooting, he he got to see the image as um, it would later be seen in post. There and there's um, there's more tweaking possible in post to push it in certain you know directions that you maybe can't do on set. But in general, he he was seeing what you know the image would look like uh, would look like in post. There's a big, you know, pissing contest that's been going on for years, you know, about resolution 2K, 4K, 5K, 6K. I mean, I've had these discussions with Red, you know, where they go, oh, we got, we got the new camera coming up, it's 5K. And I go, uh, 2K is more than I need, you know, pretty much, like, that's, you know, that's, that's really great. But I don't, I don't really need more than a full-on... 2K image, I can't see, I, my eyes can't resolve beyond that, so I don't, I don't know what a lot of these discussions are about when you get beyond 4K, I don't know what we're looking at. On the second film we had the production cameras by that point, so it definitely had come up in quality and absolutely mechanically there were a lot of problems that the first prototype had that were alleviated in the second camera. But the biggest difference was that we shot the first film anamorphic, and the second film was spherical. Uh, so the anamorphic film, which was with, which was the one we shot second, uh, was actually using less of the sensor. It only used 60% of the sensor because uh, we only use a square part of it, and then you stretch it out for the anamorphic. Uh, and I have to say that it's it's just a different look, and you're not it's, it's an anamorphic look. I think it. it it gave it more, to me, it gave it more, actually, a more filmic look, whereas the second one, to me, the spherical one, I wouldn't say had more of a digital look, but uh, was, was more of a, a, what I guess would be more of a red look. The resolution is so good that often I find myself wanting to back it off a little bit. It's all, it can it can, under cer certain circumstances, be almost unnaturally sharp. Now, in the case of part two, where we were, if we were outside and the sun was shining, I, I would just close the aperture down to sixteen and a half, you know, because that was sort of the aesthetic of that film. Whereas on part one, no matter what circumstance we were shooting, it was two eight um, by design. And what I liked about part one and what I've, what I've liked about shooting with anamorphic lenses on the red since then is that it just it softens it a little bit so that it just doesn't have that kind of almost creepy sharpness to it. I'd either worked with or seen almost all the, the high-end digital cameras before, um, before we started working with the red. And they all had various issues for me, the, the biggest one being the size. Um, often I'd be presented with what was supposed to be the newest, most cutting edge digital motion picture camera, and I would just look at it and go, well, you got to be kidding me. This is bigger than a Panaflex. I, I want, it's supposed to be smaller. That's what we all want. That's the point. And so for me, at least, the red had addressed this issue of size and weight, you know, because it, it seemed to me if, if we're, if this is supposed to be an evolution and this is supposed to be the next step, then this thing ought to be small. <laughs>